everything you thought you knew about SHBG may be wrong. So I got this comment and I appreciate the comment. She was talking about the fact that I have a relatively high SHBG and because of that, it's binding up a lot of my free testosterone. I presented my labs and I said my, my total testosterone is 138, but my free testosterone is only 1.6, which is in the low end there, uh, even though I take testosterone because I have a high SHBG. And so she was asking, are you worried about that high SHBG and should you take something to lower it? And the answer is no. I'm actually really happy that I have a high normal, still the normal range, SHBG. Now, certainly if you're outside the normal range, you want to rule out pathologies that can cause high SHB, like hyperthyroidism, like liver disease, like alcohol abuse, or uh, eating disorders, caloric restriction, things like that. But we tend to see high SHBGs, like in the normal range, high normal, associated with good metabolic health. And in fact, we know that when we see a low SHBG, there's a concern for insulin resistance, prediabetes, diabetes. So high SHBG in women is more associated with better metabolic health. You also will see an increase in SHBG if you're exercising regularly, if you are not eating too many calories, if you're doing fasting occasionally. So certainly if it's abnormal, figure out why, but if it's high normal in the normal range, that's actually a good thing, but you do have to understand how it affects your other hormones. Make sense?